Hello everyone and welcome to episode 118 of the 10 minute modeling challenge. This week I'm going to be doing the Infensia Discord server weekly modeling challenge again and Arvid's posted another theme and it's beer. No, it's beer. Be bear. I don't even know how to say the difference. It's a, like a teddy be beer. Teddy beer. Teddy bear. <laughs> so I'm going to be modeling a teddy bear in just a minute and of course we're going to do it low poly. What else uh, can you do it? But I might actually throw a subdivision modifier and I might even model with the subdivision modifier on because I think uh, it's still a bit easier to get those round shape but still keep it a little bit uh, like low poly. So what else is new? I'm just working on Ultra Nova. I'm working on line work. I'm doing contract work on line work now. That's going well. I've done a lot of optimizations, performance and boost on the map generator. Uh, it's caching all of that stuff to disk and then more importantly at the moment I've uh, done pooling for all the warheads and the explosions so they should instead of reinstantiating a new explosion or a new warhead every time one's launched and that's a big no-no if you have a lot of stuff going on because it needs to allocate the memories and create a hierarchy of uh, game objects and things like that in unity so instead you spawn maybe a hundred of those or a thousand and then it just picks it from the pool activates it shows it and then puts it back in the pool deactivates it that's going really well so should should hopefully see some performance boosts in the near update of line war i'm also working on ultra nova i think i said that game design document is pretty solid now and i learned a lot from the last video where i did the hollow knight analysis that was super useful actually because i played it and i analyzed it and thought about it and i know what i want to do and i definitely know what i don't want to do from there because making a metroidvania is a massive undertaking and i'm not doing that i'm actually going to do more of a traditional um, like action adventure platformer and it's going to be more true to just uh, completing levels and fighting bosses and uh, improving your character along the way so none of those uh, expanding folding back on itself maps uh, it's just uh, gonna that would be too much of an undertaking especially for a solo dev like me at the moment i'm also uh, looking a little bit at the news uh, and i saw that epic is uh, so they're actually uh, we considered releasing line war for a while on the epic store so instead of steam i'm gonna release it on steam of course as well but epic's store is a little bit better because it has uh, you get 88 percent instead of 70% of the sales and Epic or Unreal Engine, Epic, <laughs> they take 12%, so that's pretty good. And I know that Epic is really trying to get the market share from Steam because they've been giving away free games for years. And, and I looked in the news and with a recent uh, battle in court that Epic had with Apple, it was actually revealed that Epic spent $12 million last year, or at least during one year, to, pr to fund those free games that it keeps giving away every week. And I know it's a, like they, they had a lot of money from Fortnite, so they're taking that money and then they're buying games so they can actually give them away for, for a week for free just to try to get people over from Steam. And it's going to take many more years to do it because Steam's just got such a vast library of games. And Steam must be making an absolute fortune because imagine 30% on all the games that are selling on Steam. And as we did last week, uh, just Hollow Knight alone is sold for like, uh, I think the developer gets uh, $58 million, but then, well, the steam has 30 percent of the original sale price of that plus all the other games combined so they must be um, like making an absolute fortune but but i read that epic is actually losing money at the moment so they laid off 900 people last month in september or two months ago now which is a bit crazy i didn't actually know that but then across the whole game industry we're seeing some drops microsoft laid off uh, thousands of people meta that's not really a gaming company i guess unless you're playing oculus or something uh, they laid off people and other game studios are following it as well so maybe it's a little bit of a new era and uh some room for our us indie developers that just sit here in our basements or in my case uh, just on the ground floor and <laughs> doing our own games so we'll see what happens uh, also epic is shifting a lot to the fortnite creator and i think they want to go in on the roblox market but where they have a lot of content creation and so epic laid off 900 people and i believe a lot of that is because they're doing this shift towards the content creation stuff when i've looked at the stuff that's being created in the unreal engine for fortnite i'm not super happy with it because it feels like it's just fortnite but with, uh, you know, you're doing an obby or something or always up there call or something like that where you just climb. And I'd say that the mechanic of uh, precision jumping and stuff like that is not as good in Fortnite as it is in a lot of the Roblox uh, things like that. Maybe it'll catch up. Graphically, it's beautiful. All right. That was uh, a brief uh, little uh, this week's uh, news in the industry with game development. But now let's switch over to some modeling instead. I've just got my normal uh, scene here. Again, if you want to have this palette texture, check the link in the description. You can download that one. Just head over there. Uh, I like it a lot. I used this uh, palette texture and this scene when I did a workshop. I actually drove up to Sunshine Coast. I was invited by a college there. I had a lovely time. It was eight kids uh, ranged. I think they were aged uh, 12 to 17 and going from no experience in Blender and some of them had you uh, a little bit more, quite a bit actually. And it was a lot of fun. I did the, a character creation modeling during the day and we're going to 
flex it a little bit so we can see how much we get through the day. I'd prepared so we could do the modeling and armature and also rigging if it came to it. Most of the day was spent modeling and tweaking and fixing some of the issues that we ran into. And then towards the end of the day, um, created an armature and just did the automatic mapping the weight uh, with a deformation on the rig and that worked uh, good, but we didn't do any animating there. So we used this palette there and um, I see when new people get their hands on it, I can understand that it's a little bit weird, especially when you move these vertices on the left and the right and like you have to care about where the mouse is. So I learned a little bit of there. Maybe I can improve my tutorials a little bit based on this stuff that I saw there. But now I'm going to be modeling a bear, a nice can of bear, a bear, teddy bear. Uh, OK, so let's set our timer. Never include this part in the video, so I just say it. All right, 10 minutes on the clock. Ready, steady, go. Yep, that's it, counting. All right, so let's tab into edit mode. Uh, actually, I'm going to go in here and then we'll do the mirror modifier because I'm going to do a mirrored teddy bear. Eight, select everything, move it up and then look, look from the whoop. Uh, scale it down, G, move it in. I'll do roughly about two meters high. Usually that's my character. It's going to be a big teddy bear, I guess. And now, do you know what? I'm going to put the mirror modifier, or not the mirror, the subdivision. Control 1 I'm going to do straight away. I'm going to model from here. E to extrude. All right, let's do it like that. Uh, move that one in. Do some legs here. Okay, I'm going to actually do wider because it needs to be like a cuddly thing. Uh, e to extrude. And E to extrude. Front view here and scale it up. Oop, not that much. Scale, move it down to there. Eight, select everything, let's move it down. So that's our core body here. Scale on the y-axis and then E to extrude. And move that down and then we'll do an arm here. E to extrude. It's fun to actually have this modifier on straight away to see what happens. E to extrude, S to scale, R to rotate. And I think we'll start like that, yeah. Scale Z. All right. Head E to extrude, S to scale, well, neck first, I guess. And then eight minutes 42 on the clock. E to extrude, S to scale, and then we'll just do a big head here. E to extrude and S to scale. That's it. A little bit taller. There we go. Control R, I'll do a loop cut here as well. Scale something like this. Move it up to there, and I'll slide this one into GG. Good game, slide it in. Better. Now let's do this little front face on the teddy bear. Shift D to duplicate that one, G to move it in, move it in, and E to extrude. L to select the linked, G to move it in, scale Z. Well, I don't know. How should it look? I don't know. Okay, let's do the, like, no, no, not nose, what's it called? Tip of a teddy bear's, it is a nose, isn't it? All right, uh, L, L, move it in there and then we'll do an eye as well and that one I have to take away from here so let's go oh well I'll do the ear first scale Y and G to move it R to rotate it E to extrude <laughs> L to select the linked and the dishwasher is coming on or something I hear a lot of sounds but this microphone should actually clip it out pretty good I think it's good when you live in a household where there's noises uh, G to move it there L scale white this is a dynamic mic actually it's pretty good so it, actually i have to be super close to it to speak to it otherwise it sounds well i did that error in the other video remember so shift e to duplicate we'll do an i here as well g well move it in e to extrude and l to select the linked very handy and g to move it and bring it in okay i moved it too much uh rotate g that's a big eye scary my family went to see uh, Five Nights at Freddy's. I didn't want to see that one because I don't really like scary movies. <laughs> this feels like it came out of there. Uh, gee, this is meant to be cute. It looks like a freaky, scary thing. Uh, I don't know, does it? <laughs> All right, so S to scale and I'll do it. Control R, loop cut there, scale. Should we do like this uh, belly thing as well? How is I'm doing? 634, I have to pick the phone up. Uh, I to inset, B for boundary. G to move it and G to move it in. That's it. And I have to do something with the palm as well. G to move it. G and here we go. So A to select everything. We have to make it brown now. Brown teddy bear. G and brown we've got down here somewhere like this maybe. There. And then we'll do the nose in short of other terms. I don't know. L, L. That's it. That's all the stuff. That's going to be some sort of a dark black there. I don't really like that the nose is so fat. So let's try to get rid of that. Yeah, that's better. And then uh, here, let's do uh, 
some insetting as well. I to inset, and then we'll do like a brighter color here. That's it. And we'll do the same on the belly, I think. Uh, G. There we go. Get rid of that. And here on the palm as well, should we do? G. So that's cute. Or something. <laughs> I don't know, it's cute. That's uh, exaggerating a bit. G to move it there. And then now we can just tweak it a little bit, I guess. I think it's nearly done. How am I doing? 518. Okay, what am I going to do now? It's done. Uh, okay, we can do a little bit on this, maybe. G, G. The ears are too big, I think. Scale. G, rotate. I guess I'll just tweak it a little bit. Because I don't know what to do with the time otherwise. I, I'm going to try to cutify it. Because it looks uh, a bit creepy still. G and what else do teddy bears have? Okay, this arm's way too wide anyway, that's for sure. Scale Y. For a change, I got a little bit of time to tweak it, but then I don't know what to do. Oh, okay, that's it. Maybe I'll bring this in as well. Uh, shift select. Scale. It looks a bit square here, so I'll slide this. GG is a good trick because it slides the vertex. And G and GG. There we go. And then we'll arc, arch the back. Give it a little bit of a bum there. That's it. And what else? This one should maybe be a brighter color too, right? Yeah, that's better. Okay, the eyes. The eyes. I, I think I want them like I do my characters. Scale X. That's a little bit cuter. And then G G and should this be different? No. No. And I think they have maybe a little bit like that? Is that better? Ah, I don't know. I think so. A little bit. Just a t t tiny bit. Alright. Um, and also, I could try... I mean, I've got... How am I doing? Teddy bear. Oh, it's actually locked my screen. How about is that? Three minutes. Alright, let's do another teddy bear then. Shift D to duplicate. Oh, I can rig it. Let's rig it. I should have done that before. Shift A. Uh, armature. And go here. Viewport display. Okay, not there, here. Viewport display in front. Okay, this suddenly got super stressy now because now I need to try to rig this thing. E to extrude, E to extrude, E to extrude, neck bone, E to extrude, head bone. Here we go. Here, E to extrude, Alt P, disconnect bone, G. I think I'm not gonna do a collarbone this time. I'm gonna regret that probably. Uh, e to extrude. We'll just do, we don't even have to do the hands, so that should do it. And here we go, E to extrude, middle mouse button, Alt P, disconnect bone, but keep the parent there. G, E to extrude, and that should do. Then we'll F2, root bone. Okay, I'll need to slide this down a little bit. F2, and we've got spine one, F2, spine two, F2, neck, and F2, head. And here we'll do F2, upper arm, dot L, F2, lower arm, dot L. How am I doing? 145, okay. Upper leg, dot L, lower leg, dot L. And then eight, select everything. F3, symmetrize this thing. And that's it. I'll do the inverse kinematic too. I need to map this bone here. Oh, I should have done that before. So how am I doing? 122, let's try it, let's try it, let's try it. Could we see the fail chicken? Delete. And then here, need to move this one to the side. A little twist there for the IK. A little twist there. Oh no, actually, do you know what? I'm not, I don't have any feet, so I'm not gonna do IK. I don't need it. So we don't need that. Oh, that's it. And then we'll do, select this one, shift select this one, control P and armature deformed with automatic weights. 
And I think we're gonna have some problem with the head. Control tab into post mode. Rotate, yeah, okay, so I've got 46 seconds to fix this now. We're gonna control tab, do here. I'll select the link, L, 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 the ear as well, that's it. And then we're gonna do um, control G, remove from all, control G, set active group, head, control G, assign to active group, and that should be fixed. Oh, okay, I had something else. 24 seconds, I'll have to do it again. Control P, control P with automatic weights. Tab, L, 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 control G, control G, remove from active group. I don't know, remove from all, control G. Oh, what happened? Control G, ah. Oh. I don't know what happened here actually. Control G, vertex groups. I have to do it again. Shift with automatic weights. Control G, remove from all groups. Control, ah, oh, I did remove all groups. Control G, that's why, I can't do that. All right, so let's do it actually the way I should have done it now. Select this one, select this one. Control P with automatic weights. Tab into edit mode of the character. L, 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 L on these, control G, and then remove from all. And then control G, set active group head, control G, assign to active group. And now it should work. Stress, stress did that, I blame stress. R, 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 R. <laughs> How's this doing, the leg? R, R, yeah. It sort of works. How does it look if I disable the mirror modifier actually? Or the, not the mirror modifier. Let's see. Here we go. Subdivision. <laughs> okay. Well, that looks kind of fun too, actually. I like that one too. That's low poly. The eyes go a little bit inside there, but I think this one needs the, the super advanced. <laughs> How, what if we bump up the level as well? You could also shade it smooth, like to do A to select everything, right click, and then do shade smooth. And that goes actually pretty smooth, doesn't it? Let's see. Yeah, that would work. Bit of a giveaway on this, that it's a bit squarish, but... Z material preview, solid. There you go. But, do you know what? I'm all about low poly, so... Control tab, oh, of course. Right tab, select everything, and shade flat. I just like that look more. Sorry. Sorry, guys. And girl. <laughs> All right. That's going to be it for this video. Hope you like this little teddy bear. Go to the Infancia Discord server, join the weekly challenge there, and a whole bunch of people there doing some cool modeling every week and sharing it in the Discord. And uh, I'll uh, be doing episode 119 at some point. And uh, look out for some other videos as well. Um, I've uh, created some uh, Unity and Blender tutorials as well. They'll be showing up. I've actually queued them already. So wait for those to drop. You never know when. Just uh, make sure you subscribe and you'll catch them. Thanks to my patrons as well, patreon.com slash infensia, and hit the like button if you like the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next week for another video. Take care, bye for now.